In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use technical analysis when it comes to trading stocks and options. So whether you're someone who has been trading or you want to understand technical analysis for beginners, then this is the video for you. We're going to cover what I believe are the most powerful technical analysis patterns out there and how you could use them. I'm Charles Moon and I'm here to teach you to become a better trader. Let's dive in. Okay, so we are going to cover a lot today, folks. So before we get started, if you don't think you'll have time to watch this whole video, we prepared a nice summary slash cheat sheet that summarizes everything I'm gonna to cover today. You can get it by clicking the button that should pop up in that top right corner of this video or head to the link in the description of this video. And of course, as always, if you wanna keep getting more of these free videos to teach you how to become a better trader, hit that subscribe button, like this video, and we will keep making more and more free content for you. All right, so today, guys and gals, uh, we're gonna be covering a few trading setups that are pretty easy and straightforward. We're gonna use some technical analysis. We'll use some theories about breakouts as well. I'll show it to you from both a swing trade standpoint and a day trading standpoint and kind of give you a breakdown as to why these are so popular and what the benefits are. The point of using technical analysis is really to understand when the markets could get dynamic. We don't want to just trade and guess. They call it speculating, but we could have educated guesses. We could time things properly and timing is always a major component to trading. Have you ever been in a situation where you ended up taking a loss on a trade, but it ended up working out in the long run, maybe the timing was a factor, right? Certainly we could capture momentum following up on that timing, but you know, that old adage of buy low, sell high, sell high, buy low, you know, we could find these moments in the markets and participate pretty early uh, when we start seeing the maybe the reaction we're expecting. Now, I want to make sure that we understand there's a difference between trading and investing. Investing, the idea is to buy and hold as long as you can to try and maximize your yield. Trading is different. Timing is a part of the component. It's, it's a planned and well thought out opportunity. We know our tactical entry points. We know when we need to cut bait because things aren't working out well. And we know where our upside or downside target opportunities can be. Uh, when we talk about structure and technical analysis, right? The point of it really comes down to defining that plan. Things can be very definitive and very straightforward for you. Technicals could tell you when you should be really actively looking to participate and when maybe it's time to let it go. One of the great ones that I love to use is called the X or the crossover theory. A lot of you that are watching this already may be um, using some sort of variable of this, but you may not truly understand it. Even if you do use this, right? In my last video, someone had said, I already use this, but I wanna make sure you truly understand why you should consider this or why if you're using this, you should keep on using this. All right, so let's talk about the X crossover and the, the theory of crossovers here. This is an important aspect here. So let's let's take a look. CRM uh, had these highs, but slowly started working down. And you can see we actually crossed over back down. That was right around 182, 183. And you can see how fast they dropped to 170. That actually only took a couple of days. but. From that 170 price, we quickly crossed back up, and that was right around the 180, 179 price, okay? So from that 179 price, as we started crossing back up, we have worked our way up as high as 198.17. Now, this is an important aspect to understand here, and the reason being is that these moving averages, while the chart doesn't look all that appealing here, the crossover indicated that there was really strong and dynamic buying that was taking place. You can start seeing it right there. It really started from this moment and we crossed back up. And as you can see, since we've crossed up, we have been on this beautiful 45 degree angle up. Now, you know, from a simplistic standpoint, it could just be as simple as you buy when it crosses up here and then you let it go when it crosses down. And in, in the light of it crossing down, there also can be considered short signals as well. We don't just have to trade 
one side of the market that only limits us to 50% of the opportunities. So one of the things that I always talk about as a buyer is that we want to start seeing that fanning effect. And that's an important component here. Now, respectfully, probably in this sense, I would have been stopped out. But ultimately, if you actually would have just held strong, and that was our tactical entry, our stop would have been right around here, this would have been really close. I'm, um, I'm going to assume we either were really close to stopping out or it would have stopped us out and took off. Now, that would have been the worst case scenario, but a lot of the times, to be very honest with you, when we get stopped out of these positions, it's usually a good thing. People tend to look at losses in a very negative light, but if your $100 loss or $200 loss, if you look at it a week later, it could be a $1,000 loss. Then, in essence, it became a $800 or $900 winner. You salvaged that type of money. Now, I know that people say it's not a loss until you sell it, but you know, there's times where that's probably going to be the worst case advice that you could ever hear. Respectfully, if you actually were taking that type of advice last year, uh, you'd be down quite a bit. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me in those instances that people um, have gotten margin calls because of where they bought and how far stocks have come down. Uh, you know, this is an important aspect that we also tie up money that we could be utilizing in the markets to make up for that loss. The It's not the end of the world. I understand $100, $200, even $1,000, that's a lot of money. And depending on your account size, that could be very significant. But when your money's tied up, your opportunities are tied up. And that means you don't have any ability to make money until you decide to take action on that trade. This is partly where discipline does play a significant role. This is very important as a trader. Uh, losses are a part of the game. Uh, if you know anybody that's never had a losing trade in their career, and I'm not talking about someone that took one trade in their life and they were successful. I'm talking about people that have a history of trading in their background. Um, I would love to meet that individual. They are a unicorn. It, it's not something that's realistic. We have to actually have the ability to accept losses. It is... The cost of doing business, ladies and gentlemen, it's the same thing as grocery stores. You buy produce, you buy protein, you buy other items, and not everything comes off the shelf into the consumer's refrigerator. Respectfully, some of this will go to waste. But in the end, if that month was extremely profitable for the grocery store, those losses that were incurred right, were quickly absorbed by their whole totality, right, which is for us our trading career. And, and ultimately, we don't want, we just never know when that one trade never comes back, especially in something that's extremely speculative. You know, if you're long Apple, yeah, and, you, and say you took it, you know, a while back and you're, you're down a lot, you know, respectfully, it's Apple. The likelihood of Apple recovering back towards their all-time highs is much, much greater than a company, let's say, like Lucid or Rivian that are very speculative or BLNK, charging station. I'm not trying to pick on the EV sector here. But, you know, these are something that we have to be very understanding and very respectful of. Plus, like I said, having your money tied up makes you miss other opportunities. When we see this breakdown and we see these crossovers, these are good indications that we're going to see follow through, especially what's really important in this situation is that we see this cross up after an extended downtrend run, right? If we look at the totality, remember CRM was up here and it slowly started working its way down and now it's been working its way up. This is an important aspect to understand because if we're getting crossovers on a bullish run, it's still good, but nothing is as significant as something like this. The idea here, if you notice, is that this was closer to the bottom of the chart. As you can see, we are now trading towards the higher portion of the chart. 
So this is a situation where we get these crossovers where we are looking to buy low and looking to sell high. It'll also be the same thing about shorting at the highs where we could sell high and buy low, just like we would see it right here. If I bring up other stocks, let's say, let's look at uh, Microsoft, for example, here. Microsoft, pretty bullish overall. If you notice, prior to, I'll actually pull this up in a longer time frame. Let's go 30 days. Prior to, you could see Microsoft on a very significant downtrend. We had crossed down here. We had slowly been riding it all the way down. And then all of a sudden we had crossed up here. Now it moved up slightly, crossed back down, and then it crossed up again. And since then, this was at 255 to 250, let's say 255. Microsoft is currently trading at $282. Even in the near term with that cross up, it went from 255 to 280 in a matter of three and a half days, uh, let's say four days. So what do we look for in these situations? Number one, I don't just have a qualifier on one moving average, okay? I'd like to make this a little bit brighter for you folks so it's easier to see. Let's put this in this zone right here, okay? So you can see the yellow a little bit better. We look for that yellow to cross up. This is on a five, but you could always temper it out. Some people like it on a nine, some people like it on a seven. This is what it'll look like if it was on a nine. It'll probably be just slightly smoother. So looking at it from the standpoint of the nine EMA, that is what we're looking to cross up. The nine EMA would be the yellow line right here. The pink line in the middle, which I'll highlight with a pink arrow, right there. That is the 20 EMA, 20. And I'll make this nine right here. And then the next one, folks, will be the blue, the teal, or the, yeah, the light blue, teal blue. And that will be right here. That will be the 50 EMA. As you can see, these are all the same indicators, just on different time frames. The moving averages is a derivative based off of the closing price of the stock. Now, uh, the SMA, uh, simple moving average, will only give you an average of the closing prices based on the time frame that it's set. So in this instance, it would be the last nine closing candles or bars, the last 20 or the last 50. The EMA is slightly weighted, so it actually causes it to fluctuate a little bit more. Similar to a SMA, uh, they'll be fairly in line because they're also both using the closing price, but you'll see the fluctuations in the EMA a little bit more. So it's a little bit better fit uh, for shorter term trading as opposed to the longer term picture. The longer term picture, we should be using the simple moving averages. Wall Street likes the simple moving averages. They reference those, and that's where the importance of the simple moving average on the longer term time frame. More on the daily, the weekly charts. Those are the time frames that I really like the simple moving averages. All right, so before we keep on going on the crossover, I just want to bring something to your attention. If you want to apply to work with me, if you're really interested in learning more directly from me and learning how to trade in my live signal room, we put together a brief quiz that uh, you could take to make sure that we're actually a good fit. I only take on you know, a specific amount of clients or new students every single month. And if you're interested, you can check it out. Uh, the link should pop up in the upper right hand corner or you could actually go down to the description of the video and find the link there. So, you know, getting back to these EMAs, guys, when we see the faster movement and how it's aligned with more short-term trading, this is really important because it fits the motive of what we're looking for, right? To capture short-term moves in the markets. If you're looking to kind of park your money, this is not for you. 
that's investing. We're looking to trade, right? Trading is all about the opportunity. The name itself doesn't really matter much. This doesn't matter much, right? These are reoccurring patterns. And this is something that I'm going to show to you and try and prove to you today. So when we look at this and looking at the opportunities here, one thing we do have to recognize is what I was saying before. We're going from a downtrend to an uptrend, from weakness to strength. And this is an important dynamic to truly understand. This little thin purple line here as well, I want you to be very attentive. This is a much longer time frame. This is the 200 EMA. I'll also point out the fact that when stocks get above this level, you could see a very aggressive rally start taking place. And this 200 EMA could be used as a very key support and resistance level. This is important to understand. Think very bullish above, think very bearish below short term, okay? So this is a moment that I wanna point out that took place here in Microsoft. So we crossed up, but on top of that cross up, we also got above that 200 EMA. What did I just say? We said that it's an extremely, right, um, key level where stocks can get very bullish above. So this is important. All the EMAs that I present here can act as support and resistance, but nothing will be very significant like the 200 EMA. Now, you may now be asking me, what time frame is this chart? Frankly, this could be utilized in any time frame up to one hour, okay? So for day trading, you could use it on a three minute, on a five minute chart. I like to analyze my day trades on a five and 15 minute chart. And I like to take the swing trade idea on a 30 minute and one hour chart. Now, very quickly, the difference between day trading and swing trading is that day trading is meant to be in and out the same day, okay? And some people have concerns about pattern day trading rules. Well, if you're in a cash account, you don't have to worry about pattern day trading rules. But if you use margin, right, you're shorting stock, you're not buying puts, you're actually shorting stock or you're borrowing money to get better leverage, then you are gonna be subjected to the pattern day trading rules if you have less than 25,000 in your account. If you're above 25,000, you don't have to worry about anything besides cash settlement. But if you're in a cash account, guys, you could trade 100 times a day and it won't matter, right? The only thing is, again, cash settlements, all based on cash. With options, you'll have your money available the following day. With stocks, it'll take a two-day period. So if, say, today was Monday and you took on trades, that money won't be available for you until Wednesday morning. So just keep that in mind. So now getting back to this EMA here, that circle is important because that was the moment Microsoft popped back above that 200 EMA. But in correlation, it crossed up and it held. And the following day was really important because it led to a higher high, right? This was the high of the day from the previous day. Look at how much higher it got. So that already showcased that we're starting to see strength and demand in the name. Now, once this crosses over, I wait until that pink line crosses above the blue line as well. I'll actually look to be a buyer off of that yellow EMA, which is the nine currently right now. Again, you could use a five, you could use a seven, you could use a nine. For this purpose, we're using it on a nine time frame. Things could obviously get a lot more active, a lot more fluid, so you may need to switch back and forth. But generally speaking, they're all within the same range. The nine will probably be the smoothest out of all of them. We also need the 20 to cross up. That's when it's truly valid. So we look to buy 25 cents above where the nine EMA would be and place our stop 25 cents below the 50 EMA, okay? So that means that I am going to look to buy right above that yellow line once that pink line crosses up and have my stop below the blue here. Now you may actually think that I would have been stopped out, but that was the pre-market low. The opening price was back here. Well, I should probably highlight it with white. So the opening price was here. If you notice, once again, it ended up holding their level here and Microsoft continued to spike up. So this is a beautiful opportunity on that crossover 
where it exploded and started working its way up. In the meantime, folks, if you are utilizing a stop, you could absolutely trail your stop underneath that 50. If we would have gotten in back here, this was our entry, we would have gotten stopped out right here. So think about this. Your entry was around 254, and in four days, you would have been stopped out at around 274 to 273. Pretty darn good money. What you could have done was bought the following week's expiry at the money calls, and those would have been up a great amount. Because of how far it's gone up, it wouldn't surprise me if they were nearly 250%, depending on, obviously, the time frame. Some people will take on the weekly expiry. I never recommend that. You want to give yourself a little bit of time. Now, this signal is meant to move pretty quickly when you get in. But in all respects, sometimes, sometimes it needs a day or two to really get that engine revving up and going. Obviously, if it starts collapsing the day after or the following day, you may just get stopped out. But regardless, you want to give yourself a little bit of extra time. Imagine that you took on the weekly expiry of Thursday. It expires Friday. You made good money and moved $5, and then it moved another 15 from that moment. That's what you don't want to miss out on if you possibly can, right? So this was a simple example of entry and stop management. But what about taking profits? So, you know, there are cardinal rules where you could actually take your first half at 5% and your second half at 10%. And this is not the option. This is the stock price. So, for example, if the stock was $100, right? That means you're taking profits at 105, and if it works its way higher, you are cashing out at $110. A 10% gain is pretty good. Now, if there are key resistance levels, such as old highs or uh, other technical indicators on a longer time frame, we have to be respective of that as well. I'll showcase that in just a bit. But these are things that we're going to have to be very attentive of in these situations. Now, if you wanted to short, then we need the 9 to be on the bottom, the 20 in the middle, and then, of course, the 50 to be on top. And ideally, if you're looking to short, it'd be the same thing, except that you're selling the stock as opposed to buying the stock. So a prime example is as it's crossed down, here was your entry point and your stop would have been here. Notice that it came to this 200 EMA and once it got under, it really started to flush. Once again, if you would have took that short, it would have been at around 266. Well, less than uh, a week later, you would have been stopped out right around $255.50. So that turned out to be a pretty good trade, around $11. This is where we need to know where we are starting to cross up and starting to cross down. So if you're wondering how I could keep track, I actually have scanners and you can build these scanners out on Thinkorswim pretty easily. Most platforms you could actually create this. If you use TradingView, for example, you could create this. You do need to have a subscription, but nonetheless, there are scanners on Trading, uh, TradingView as well that could point these out. That could hit these qualifiers up. And if we're aware, we could plan. If we could plan, then we know the moment of attack. We know our entry point. We know our risk parameters, right? And we know where our possibilities of targets could be. Now, I know that some of you have difficulties, you know, doing a lot of research. Maybe you just don't have the time. Maybe you're not sure where to look. And if you actually want me to send out a watch list to you, do me a favor, comment down below, or like I said, click on these links. They'll be in the corner, they'll be in the description, and I'll make sure to send all that information out to you. Now, if you happen to like the crossover theory and thought it wasn't too confusing, and if you are confused, I'm sorry, just you know, reverse back and watch the video. Uh, this is something that's very flexible in both directions. You can utilize this and truly understand where the opportunities may come into play. And more importantly, if you could just use this and do well with it, do you really need anything else? 
that's the whole prospect here, guys. Sometimes keeping it very simple and straightforward can make you a ton of money. If it doesn't, if it works, why fix it, right? If it's not broken, why fix it? That's the whole thesis here. So a lot of traders do like to keep it simple. These are important indicators for swing traders. That 200 EMA threshold, it's going to actually provide a lot of context. Remember, bullish above, bearish below. Crossovers up means bullish. Crossover down means bearish. If we're thinking that it's going down, you are shorting stock or you are buying puts. If we think it's going up, we are buying stock or we're buying calls. Very simple and straightforward. So we talked about the crossovers. Now I want to talk about the VWAP. And I'm not going to spend too much time on it. You could actually reference you know, some of our previous videos. Just go to our uh, YouTube page and look up the day trading technique video that I had shared. I have other VWAP lessons in there as well. But I'm just going to briefly talk about why this is the best tool for day trading and how we could recognize and take on opportunities using this tool and really not needing much else. So again, you could absolutely, you know, utilize the crossover theory in relationship uh, with the VWAP. But, you know, as you could see here on my chart, I just have the VWAP. I have these dotted lines and I'll talk about those in a second. But, you know, prospectively, I, I just focus on volume. I look for upticks in volume. I use the RSI indicator and um, I use the VWAP with the ATR trailing stop. Now the ATR trailing stop are these blue dots that are below the market and there'll be pink dots if they're above the market. Blue means bullish bias, pink means bearish bias. So I'll tend to look for you know shorts um, more actively and progressively if they're pink or the majority of the day is pink dots and be looking to be buyers of the dip or buyers at certain reference point when the dots are blue. Uh, the market's been kind of back and forth, but we are up overall. We, we've we actually gave, gave back over two thirds of the gain so far while I'm doing this video live. Uh, but this VWAP indicator, it's highlighted by these three lines, okay? So the, the upper pink and the bottom gold line uh, or the top X and the lower X here, those are known as two standard deviations. They're two standard deviations from the middle X, which is the VWAP, which stands for Volume Weighted Average Price. Now, some people that use Bollinger Bands already kind of understand this thesis, but Bollinger Bands are two standard deviations from the 20 simple moving average. That's a lot of, that's a big difference. There's a difference between inflow and where the money has been traded as opposed to the pricing action of a stock. There's a method to the madness for whatever works for you. I just choose to use these two standard deviations from this particular derivative uh, for intraday trading. Now, this is important because they could change the perspective. Uh, they could tell you a lot of information, bullish sentiment, bearish sentiment. They could give you support and resistance. They could give you targetable levels for day trades and more importantly, gives you idea on potential reversal ideas. So ultimately, if the stock is above the VWAP, right, above that yellow line, we should have a bullish bias, right? So I like to think aggressive bullish, passive bearish. Just because it's above the VWAP doesn't mean you can't short. Again, I talked about reversal signs, but we need to be aggressively looking to buy dips as long as we remain above the VWAP. When we're below the VWAP, we should be thinking the opposite. Aggressive bearish, passive bullish. Same thing. There's a reason why we're below the VWAP, which means we're trading near the lows of the day or making new lows for the day. And, you know, if a stock's making lower lows, it's trending down. And the cardinal rule of thumb is, right, don't fight the trend. But there's going to be moments where there's going to be high probability trades that present itself. And it's really tied to the laws of averages. Um... You can nerd out a bit and kind of look at the standard deviation in respect of stocks pulling within the two standard deviations or pricing getting pulled back or the laws of magnetism to stay within the two standard deviations. I won't get into all that, but you guys can find it out there for your own. What's really important is that these three X's provide a lot of texture, right? 
moments where we could see reversals. So if we're long into these levels or short into the, these levels, we may need to look to proactively take profits. They could also provide trading opportunities. We're starting to rebound off of this level. We're starting to reject at these levels. Let's buy, let's short. And in the same thesis, the VWAP is the same. Buyers will look to, or the bulls will look to defend the VWAP, meaning they'll hold the price above. And then, of course, when it gets below, short sellers will look to get actively involved and press a lower. And in some instances, these may be scalps where you're in and out in just minutes for small gains, right? Low risk, low reward opportunities. And some of these could be massive reversals that you could just ride all day long. Imagine having that ability of shorting the highs and then letting it go on the lows. And if you don't think that's possible, I'll tell you what, this is the one indicator that could absolutely help you with that. So I also use this in correlation with the RSI indicator. The RSI is a derivative, again, off of price, an action of price. So it's similar to the moving average. It actually incorporates a moving average into the math. But uh, it doesn't tell you exactly when reversals are coming into the picture. But it's letting you know that a reversal is due soon. We actually want to coordinate that with the chart itself and the price action itself. There will be plenty of times where the RSI will be overcooked, meaning above 70 on their chart. And I'll pull it up here. Where it's above 70, which is that upper yellow line, and below 30, which is that lower yellow line. And we could still see it continue up or continue down. So the RSI doesn't accurately predict the exact second that you know things are going to reverse. But it's certainly alerting you, right? Imagine you know, an alarm going off saying, hey, hey, we need to start looking. We need to start looking. That's really what the attentive nature of the RSI is doing. Now, it, it's actually relative to trend as well. So when we start seeing the convergence divergence, meaning we're seeing the RSI start tilting up and showing an uptrend or tilting down, showing a downtrend, it's also following in sympathy with what the stock pricing is. So there's a lot of guidance involved. There's a lot of structure involved. But the only matter of importance for me is looking to see what the stock is doing relative to where it is on the RSI. And then if we start seeing that convergence divergence, it's, it's giving us a qualifier. It's giving us that direct data that we are starting to see that reversal and that we may need to pay very close attention here. Let me take that off here. So you could see near the highs of the day on Apple, the high was actually right here. That's where that little white bubble is pointing. And it looks like we actually made a higher high, but respectfully where that circle was, it was pretty much a perfect double top. 162.47, that retest on that red candle here was at 162.47. Now, if you notice, there were moments where the stock got outside that second standard deviation. This is where the laws of averages and magnetism comes into play. What ended up happening in this situation is that we saw a quick retracement right back within the band, right? Notice how it made that high, it poked out and immediately came right back down. Notice how it poked out here for a few minutes and then immediately came back down. This is why if we were long into these levels as a day trader, we're going to be very proactive. We're, if we're not stacking higher highs immediately, if we're not looking to go up, then guess what? We're more likely to reverse on down. Now, as the volatility picks up and the range picks up, the bands will widen out a bit, right? Bone band traders know this. But in the same respect, we just never know when this reversal is going to come into play. That's why as a trader, we need to be attentive of stocks trading at highs and at lows. This is another moment where earlier in the video I talked about the market can get very dynamic. This is where we can see a lot of participants get involved. And this is extremely important because when we recognize those moments, when we recognize that participants are getting involved, that also means that there's a lot more volume coming in and pricing activity could kick up. 
and we could see extreme movements come into the picture. And that's where we actually saw Apple start working lower immediately. And in fact, it started working all the way back down near the lows. And that's been the case since it hit a perfect double top at the highs. Notice that as well on that red candle, it ties in directly with where that pink line was. And it immediately started to spill and it really came back towards this VWAP. So if we actually relate that to where the RSI was, the RSI was at peak when it made the high of the day where that white bubble is. But notice that when it revisited that level, the RSI, even though the stock hit the exact same price as the high of the day, was actually lower. It was making a lower high. So folks, if highs are getting lower, and then we start making lower lows, that's actually the definition of a downtrend versus an uptrend. And if we associate downtrend with stock price, then we know that the stock price is working lower, not higher. And so you could see the magical tools and how that opportunity all lined up. So this was a scenario that really was a low risk, high reward situation. Why is it low risk? Well, it's pretty simple. If it gets above 162.47, even by a penny, it's technically made a higher high. It's more likely to continue up. Even if it pulls back a little bit, it's more likely to be bought up and moved higher. But when the market recognizes there's a double top and that we've rejected not once but twice at the same price and that now all of a sudden the signal to the buyers is that we're not going any higher, well, buyers take profits off the table and more importantly, the sellers start coming in right away because they're confident in this opportunity. So think about what I'm saying here. Buyers are selling, sellers are selling. That's why these moments can become very dynamic because the markets become one-sided in these situations. And that's why we tend to see faster moves, whether we're bouncing off lows or we're selling off at the highs. And if the momentum sustains, then it will follow through. Now, the idea here is that if you short and there's momentum behind it, we got to go for the VWAP as our target. I'm going to just write down TGT as our target. That makes sense, right? Because if buyers, the bulls, would look to defend this price, then they would be looking to buy in. And look at it right here in this situation. I'll actually take off that X, but look at it right here. They defended it on this candle, they defended it on this candle. Even here as it started breaking down, they defended it, and sure enough, it started getting trapped. Now they're back above, and notice how they're already trying to hold. If the market gets bullish, this could be another trampoline right back towards the highs of the day. That's gonna be important to watch here as we're going forward on this video. But this was a perfect example of utilizing the VWAP at the second standard deviation in relationship to the RSI, looking for this trade to the downside. And in, in, in essence, I mean, it may not be the biggest winner, but you could have gotten in with 10 cents risk and made somewhere between 50 to 70 cents downside, maybe even more. It was nearly a dollar all the way back down. Now, Apple's not a big mover, so this isn't the sexiest of trades but this recognition is extremely important. It's the same thing as well. As you can see, they started grabbing hold of the VWAP. So the VWAP buy and that reversal up, we will be looking to the second standard deviation as our upside target. Now, nothing guarantees that we'll get up to this level. Nothing guarantees that we'll come back down to the VWAP. So you want to keep managing and moving stops and locking in profits or maybe just nailing and bailing, getting in and out very quickly. The idea here is to put yourself in a high probability situation of success, taking on low risk and high reward. It's the same thing, guys. If you're looking to buy off the VWAP, you only need to have a stop slightly below the VWAP because if it starts to lose it, well, in this situation, look at how far it can start working its way back down. These are situations that we need to understand. When we're mid and mid, right, meaning midpoint of the second standard deviation in the VWAP, that becomes more of a coin flip. 
Will it go up? Will it go down? Those become extremely dangerous moments to trade. If you're patient and disciplined enough and look to trade the extremes, while it may not happen as often as you would like, there's going to be plenty of opportunities throughout the day to take advantage of, especially when we're looking at key pricing levels and utilizing these key pricing levels. You could see Meta early on, once they started to hold the VWAP right on that red candlestick, pivoted up, went to the second standard deviation, pivoted up, pivoted up, rejected, lower high, and a breakdown. Now, this is a situation where it never got back to the VWAP. So if you didn't take any action, I need you to understand, number one, folks, when we trade reversals, we're not looking to hold on all day unless it's extremely in our favor. These are the types of trades that we want to get in and out of. You're like, oh, maybe I only make $50 on that trade. Right, well, do it four times, you made $200 for the day. That's $1,000 a week, that's $4,000 at the end of the month. You do the math, what it be at the end of the year. Now, maybe you're not sure what stocks to day trade, right? That's a very key aspect here, and I totally understand why that would be difficult to understand or what to look for every day. But do me a favor, folks. If you want a cheat sheet or my watch list, there's that link up in the upper right corner. There's that link in the description below. Do yourself a favor and click on it. Get information on what stocks that you could be watching here throughout the week. And then you don't have to do any of that work yourself. You just slap it on your screen and just wait for your opportunities. So when we get to this opportunity of Meta, you could see that if we didn't take action, we actually would have been stopped out. Now think about this. You are fighting the trend. We're not wizards that we're going to short the top every time and ride it down to the lows. Take that out of the picture. We're swimming against the current of the ocean, right? We're this small country fighting this big country, and we're just trying to hold ground against them. Do yourself a favor. Don't be married to these trades. Be in and be out. So we're going to start covering a little bit more, and we're going to talk about the idea of breakouts. You always hear about it. Breakouts, 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 but we never really understand where they could take place. So I want to show you on screen a couple of older examples and a few recent examples that are starting to take place that breakout city could truly happen. Um, there, there could be on multiple time frames. It could be on a daily time frame, an hourly time frame, a one minute time frame. But in theory, breakouts usually either come from consolidation or powering up above a key, key resistance level or powering through a key support level. And maybe it may be at 52 week highs or 52 week lows. It could be after a long sustained resistance level for months on end. It could be for days on end. The prospect is, is that these are the moments where the stock can make a greater than expected move in a very short period of time. Now, again, uh, the breakouts is relative, of course, to time. Now, the, the more broader the time, the bigger the breakouts could actually be. Um, this is a good example of a breakout in Tesla that took place. Uh, just recently. Now Tesla here, I'm just going to highlight it, has been pretty much in this choppy box. This was for almost a week straight where it just traded from 186 to 176. I'll highlight it again. As you can see, we're going back and forth, back and forth here. And finally, Tesla broke free from that box and ended up launching. Now, there's always going to be a key sign, and one of the key signs that I love to see is going to be this maneuver right here. I want you to look at this green arrow that I am putting right next to that bar, and it's going to be the one right after the breakout bar. This is where the confirmation really happened. So as you can see, the white arrow is pointing to the actual bar that broke out that channel. And the green arrow is pointing to the hourly bar and something magical took place there. When it came back down to that previous resistance level or the top of the box, right? You can see that box drawn out. They utilized that level as support. In this situation, this would be what we would look for as a breakout buy, okay? 
when previous resistance immediately becomes support, that is one of the most bullish indications that you could find in a stock. And it doesn't matter if it's a long-term time frame, a weekly chart, daily chart, or a short-term time frame, one minute or three minute chart. Understand folks, this is a situation that is known as a sell trap. They trap the sellers. Those that didn't get have stops and those that didn't exit when they should have, well, they're expecting to come back down into the range that we were trading in. And you know what happened? They utilized that pricing level as support. They launched and they started squeezing out the short sellers. Look at how aggressive this bar directly up was, all right? And that all happened, folks, shortly after the breakout. Look at how right there at that top of that channel we found that support. So these green lines are important. This is the indicator of reference. It is known as a price channel, okay? Uh, if you're not on Thinkorswim and you're on a different platform, they may be known as the Donchian channel, D-O-N-C-H-I-A-N, right? Uh, Delta Oscar, Charlie Hotel, India Alpha November, Donchian uh, channel. Uh, what this does is actually tracking the recent trading range of a stock. Uh, it adjusts, the top line will adjust to the extreme high or the highest printed price. And the bottom of the uh, channel or the bottom green line will adjust to the extreme low, the lowest trading price. Now, if you're wondering, it's over a 21 period, but I do offset it by minus one. I believe the Donchian channel already comes with that offset built in, but if not, I would include it. The reason being is that if you don't have that offset, and I'll show you here really quick, notice that it basically hides those breakout bars. It's a little bit difficult to see. So when I offset it here, and you'll see that I'm offsetting it right now, to minus one, it doesn't change the time, but look at the clarity. Now all of a sudden, you don't see uh, the, the channel overlapping the bars. It's offset by one. It's giving you a little bit of space to give you that visual cue, that representation. So whenever I see consolidation, this is one of the things that I'm absolutely looking for, a breakout above and beyond these pricing levels. Those are extreme ideas here, and we could see these huge breakouts take place. From a hourly standpoint, I actually would trade this. I'd be looking, once it closes above and opens above, to buy 25 cents above that top green line. And my stop would be 25 cents, I don't know why I wrote eight, 25 cents here at the bottom of that box or that bottom green line. The idea is that if it does happen to sink in, it could waddle through, it's gonna to have to go through support anyways, and it's gonna go, uh, it's gonna to have to go through all of that mishmash back and forth trading to stop me out. Now I'm not saying that's not possible, but certainly we wouldn't want that to happen. And more importantly, this is what we want to see, a price jump. Like for example, in Tesla, we jumped from 186 up to $200. That's the power of recognition on these breakout setups. When we look at the daily chart, this will be a little bit different. I would never recommend taking that type of trade, right folks, that type of trade on the daily chart. But you could recognize it just the same and utilize it as a trade and maybe using the X crossover trade or maybe using it for a day trade or maybe having a different reason to be a buyer. But look at right here where Meta held the top of the channel and then exploded. In essence, going from 190 to 205 in two days. We have seen stocks like Nvidia do the same thing as well when they break outside the, the top of the channel huge sustained breakouts. Currently, CRM is starting to showcase that exact same behavior. And the beauty is that this is where we get into uncharted territories without much resistance and in essence, a upside target where we could find the opportunity of buying at highs and riding that momentum to a big, big breakout. These are extremely important. 
because if we could recognize these breakouts, if we could recognize these opportunities, they become great, great trading moments for you to profit from. Look at Apple, where it broke outside the channel here at 156 and was up to 162 pretty darn quickly. If we can see this continuation respect and opportunity of progression, then we know that there is a moment where we can make a lot of profits in a short period of time. Why? It's the same theory as day trades, guys. It's the same thing that I was talking about. Sellers get trapped up. They have to exit their positions. If buyers are recognizing these breakouts, well, they're aggressively hunting these opportunities. And then the market becomes one-sided, right? Buy on the buyers. Sellers to exit would have to buy to close out their price. We just have nothing but buyers in the markets and no sellers are willing to step in the way, not until the next resistance level. FSLR has been a really popular one. You could see when FSLR has broken through key resistance, how far they can jump. Now, they didn't stack today. They didn't even hold ground today. But remember, the markets have been pretty weak. But they have shown these breakout tendencies. They showed it here at 145 to 162. They showed it here from 162 to 172. They showed it here from 173 to 189. They just broke out and didn't even slow down. They went from 186 to 218. BABA is another example where you could see right here, folks, they've had a lot of consolidation. There was a double top right here. And when they got above that level, it basically went from 95 to 120. Look at what happened when it broke down below the channel. Went from 100 to 80. Now they're breaking it back above that channel, 93 to 105. You catch my drift? When we see this, we know that progression could happen very quickly. But same thing, if we are buying at highs and we're taking that aggressive stance, we don't want to be married to the trade. It could be a quick in and out. We certainly want to maximize it the best we can, but the idea here is that we want to put ourselves in a position of success. We don't want to take on too much risk. And if we decide to keep holding it night after night, the more likely we could see stocks start bombing out from the highs. If the move's already been made, folks, guess what? Don't chase it. This is that rule of thumb of not buying at the highs. There are moments that you are looking for. The breakout tendency is one of them, but that's only on the day that it breaks out or the day after if it uses that old resistance as support. If you're trying to buy it three days after it broke out, folks, guess what? You're too late. You're chasing. And you're more likely to have it fall on your head than have it working for you. So keep that in mind. Again, the key word here is discipline. Be disciplined. If you miss it, you miss it. Wait for a pullback. Buy on the pullback. Buy the dip. Buy low, sell high. In this situation, it is a buy, house, buy high, sell high, but there's a reason for it. Not all breakouts are the same. There are certain mechanics and certain indicators that give you that guidance. Make sure you stick to these levels and to this thesis. Otherwise, you're playing a forever chasing game. And guess what? These will be the worst types of trade to take. Buy at the highs and have it sink all the way back down. This is important. Because these trades in a matter of days could provide a great amount of reward. Now, that doesn't mean there's not a lot of risk. This is also something to understand. This is not a situation where it's like a reversal, where it's a low risk, high reward scenario. This is high risk, high reward. And it may not be for everybody, and that's okay. You got to do what you got to do as a trader. You got to work within your personality, your risk tolerance, and your comfort level. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. Not all two traders are the same. I wish everybody could be like me. I wish I could be like the best traders in the world. But respectively, we all grew up differently. We may view money differently. We live differently. There's just a lot of different things. Our personalities as well. That makes a big determining factor on who we are as traders. And in that sense, folks, we just have to trade within our own skin. This is a game of self-discovery. And once we discover that, 
Then we plan around it. We play around it. We find out what works for us and what doesn't work for us. This setup, this idea, this whole context is not for everybody. Buyer beware, seller beware. All uh, the others, it's pretty straightforward. Anybody can take them, but this is the one that I gotta put a major emphasis on. So again, folks, I hope you found this video informative. I didn't wanna bore you with a three and a half hour video. I'll be making a lot more videos like this. And if you happen to like what you hear today, do me a favor, comment below. Let me know what you want me to talk about next. Uh, I have a lot of different ideas that are working in the pipeline in terms of content. If you happen to enjoy this, of course, please let us know. Subscribe, hit that notification button. Guys, if you want that watch list, like I said, I could do a lot of that work for you. We'll be sending it out. That link is going to be in the description. And lastly, folks, don't forget, if you want to work direct with, directly with me, learn from me, and take trades in my live trading room, do me a favor, click on that link, fill out that quiz. Let's see if we're a match, and if we are, let's get you in. Folks, I really hope you enjoyed this content. Until next time, peace and love, everybody.